Uh, sorry, Th uh, sure, go ahead. Uh, thanks very much for your time, Don. This is uh, Don Bramlett and Mike Anthony, and we would like just to give a brief uh, video clip about what's possible uh, for continuing education at the uh, 2016 uh, ICPNS conference in Detroit. So go ahead, Don. Mm -hmm. Okay, Annette. Uh, well, Annette, um, continuing education units, or CEUs, and professional development hours, PDHs, are a measure used in continuing education programs, in particular for those that are uh, licensed uh, professions, for professionals to maintain their license. Um, engineers, obviously, are the main uh, uh, people that work interested in, but you have architects and teachers and nurses and many others that have similar types of continuing education uh, programs. The uh, continuing education unit, or CEU, is uh, essentially geared for use with uh, formal um, non-credited continuing education uh, programs like uh, workshops, seminars, tutorials, or self-study courses. PDHs and that uh, can be for the same items, but also are used for more non-formal learning events, such as attending speaker events, uh, uh, tours, and webinars along that uh, particular line. And the reason we started looking at that uh, uh, is uh, in the state of Michigan has joined most other states and requiring a certain number of what they call as continuing education hours, uh, CEHs, but they're essentially equivalent to uh, PDHs, professional development hours. And so in the state of Michigan, starting this year, 2015, to renew your license for the following two years, you have to have completed 30 continuing education hours, or PDHs. And uh, you don't have to turn in that material then, you just have to maintain your own records. And if you're ever audited, then you have to have evidence that you uh, completed uh, those uh, particular uh, hours. Um, and actually, the, use, uh, the term CEUs and PDHs are really in public domain. Any organization can issue them, but the problem is the credibility of those CEUs or our PDHs. Uh, there is a one organization, International Association for Continuing Education and Training, that does offer an accreditation program for CEUs. So that would be for the instructors or someone presenting a paper or a, a, a curricula of some sort. That they is would, correct. Okay, they would conform. So I guess we uh, the back story here is we can find out more about that. The Engineering Society of Detroit, or even IEEE might know that, and that information will be posted here. Mm -hmm. um, one item that you had mentioned that this is uh, audited. So very often in conferences, they'll give you a certificate of a certificate of uh, yeah. attendance. Sometimes they do that. That is, that is correct, and that uh, you have to, you know, keep those so that if you were audited by your um, licensing organization, the state of Michigan or a different state, you'd have to be able to present those uh, as, as evidence that you completed their, those uh, licensing re uh, continuing education requirements. So this would mean every other year. I think you said. Since my, I think my license is every other year. Yeah, it's every every two years. Every yeah. two years, so that would mean that roughly two days per year, or or a conference or two conference, two eight-hour sessions uh, per year, roughly speaking. They have it 30 hours, but it's probably uh, so. It's 15 hours per year. They couldn't have made it 16 hours, right? <laughs> I made it 15 hours. Okay, so you can leave early. Well, you can always you can always get more. You don't have to. Sure, you don't. I, I get it. Okay, fair enough. Well, it's not a. Okay, so we'll be. All of the sessions will be offering this, or most of the sessions. Our job will be to to make sure that. Well, we have to determine what will fit into the category and what we really want to do it and how we want to document it. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. And I see IEEE does have a recording program for this. It's considered to be a, a legitimate organization to offer CEUs and PDHs. And, that, and there's a, a formal process that can be done, that has to be done ahead of time for CEUs and PDHs. If you want IEEE as the, the mother organization, Mm-hmm. to uh, issue these, and uh, so you have to provide uh, inf- information uh, to IEEE, especially in the case of CEUs, because they're a much larger program and for more of a formal mm-hmm. educational program, like, say, tutorials that might be associated with the INCPS conference. Mm-hmm. And, so- that, and then it, they, they, they're like a, a peer-reviewed uh, program programs so that you have to provide the uh, uh, curriculum information uh, to IEEE for them to look at that, to look at the qualifications, the presenter, and everything else, see what your assessment uh, method will be and the evaluation method will be so that if they want to essentially accredit it for CEUs or PDHs. CEUs are a little more rigid with the documentation you have to provide. PDHs are a little bit less rigid, but a similar uh, process. Mm-hmm. Along that line, that now, the, the uh, actually the local section or entity or even our conference could uh, directly do issue PDHs and do it using our own uh, form. It would not have to be done through the IEEE mother organization. It could be done by our local organization. Well, maybe we should see if there anybody else is doing that in the southeastern Michigan area. And, and uh, well, r- well, we are, Ned, and as was noted by David Mineham, our uh, section treasurer at our meeting last Friday, he's working on coming up with a standard form to be used in our section. And because this is new, it's, it's only been a, an effect starting this year in Michigan is why there's been uh, an emphasis on getting it so that we can do that in in our local technical programs as well as potentially at the INCPS conference. So like paper sessions, and that would probably qualify for uh, getting the PDHs Mm -hmm. and and a tutorial on that we would, uh, if we wanted to get CEUs, and that uh, we would actually have to do that through IEEE and get the tutorial information to them for a peer review ahead of probably about three months prior to the uh, conference. Okay, well, it strikes me getting as much identified through the national, international organization would probably be in our interest, but we're starting from scratch in Michigan, so mm-hmm. if, we, if we move a little bit ahead on this uh, for this conference, then then we have made some 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 progress. Mm-hmm. Are any other conferences being held in Detroit right now, or the Detroit area? Are they offering CEUs or PDHs that you know of? Uh, I'm unaware of anything at the present. Okay. Well. Okay. Well, uh, it'd be nice to get more hands on deck about this. It strikes me then what I hear what you say, Don. So there are two considerations for you and I as, as, as planners and uh, committee chairman, one is that uh, we have the program that's essential that meets the criteria for CEUs and, and, and or PDHs. So that has that lies with the authors and how you craft the tutorials and the subject matter and such and so forth. There's documentation, obviously, that we can pass out certificates of attendance, blah, 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 blah. But then the other part is just... Uh, the benefit it has to attendees. So we'll work at both ends. It strikes me that we have to work this in both ends, both from the program content as well as for the participant and the value they get. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's probably enough to give people a, a flavor of what we're talking about. Anything else, Don? Uh, I think we're pretty much covered there, everything I had to to identify that was pertinent to our conference and that because, I mean, there, there's other things you can get into where 
you can take college courses, issue patents, get patents, and, and other things to get uh, get uh, PDHs and whatever. But relative to our conference, we're primarily looking at PDHs for uh, paper sessions and potentially CE. Uh, use our uh, fraction of a CEU for a uh, a uh, tutorial. Mm -hmm. Well, also. Writing a paper or co-authoring a paper uh, ought to count as a CEU, it strikes me. And, uh, no, I think actually uh, one published paper, article, or book is worth uh, six PDHs. No kidding. You mean that's not as, <laughs> for all the time we spent on putting papers together. Mm. But, I know, I know. Uh, they came out with some standards, like a uh, one patent award is ten PDHs. Uh, a university one semester hour course is forty five PDHs. And there's a there's a divider there that turns them into a CEU, right? And that uh, well, yeah. Essentially, a CEU is equal to ten PDHs, but on that. And, and equivalent size, and but from a professional standpoint, with the uh, uh, licensing board in Michigan, they, they only look at at what they call C C H S, which is really a P D H. So that uh, uh, and that I mean, uh, uh, you'd have to have a formal course for a C E U, but for a P D H can be less formal. So you need to be wor worrying more about PDHs. Okay. All right. Well, okay. Then what I'll do is I'll uh, we'll close this link and I'll put it on the uh, this this page here, and then I think we'll likely need to assign somebody to to, to work on this. But for the moment, I'm going to.